It is legit 11.45 on my son Rocco's 18th birthday, and I'm pulling inventory because tomorrow we are driving to New Jersey to move my son Anthony into his new apartment. Do you ever have those moments where you just realize that you're probably at your tipping point and something's got to give? I think I'm having one of those moments right now. I'm trying to pull some shipping that needs to go out on Monday morning because I won't be here. The house is quiet right now, so I'm trying to get some stuff done because I have to film a video tomorrow before we head to New Jersey. This was a full price bundle, by the way. One of my customers, Deidre, she has been with me for years and she always comes in and she purchases things full price and she's just too good to me. So thank you, Deidre. This Wilfred cropped sweater, I've sold this once before. I'll show you the comps on this sweater. It's just one of these classic cropped ribbed sweaters. This is sold at Aritzia. And I think the first one I sold for $80 and this one sold for 79 full price. Bins are overflowing. This right here. Oh my gosh. This is so beautiful. I paid up for this. She paid $100 for this sweater. It was a $179 bundle for two items. I need to find something extra to send to her. My poor studio looks like the Goodwill outlet. These are all things that Angie has donated to me. She's running her first whatnot show this week. She needs to earn some extra money, but this is what I'm dealing with. I'm just such toast. I'm not complaining in this video. I'm just talking about what my tipping point is and I'm wondering what your tipping point is because I feel like I am legit at mine. Just too many irons in the fire right now and a lot going on in the month of August. I'm getting up love, I'm coming. <laughs> looks so dark in here and it's not that dark. Welcome back to another recap video. My name is Lori. I'm a reseller on Poshmark and eBay. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I share my adventures in thrifting here with you. Sometimes I'm talking about sales, which I will be doing in today's video. Other times I take you along thrifting with me. I bring you along for the ride. So I'm really happy that you're here. Today is my monthly recap video where I share uh, my thoughts on my business, check in with some of the goals, what I'm reaching or uh, things that are slipping through the cracks. This month is an example of a lot of things that are slipping. I feel like I'm slipping on the daily. I have three kids. They are all moving into their new places in the month of August. So as crazy as July was, August is going to be even crazier. So what I've been doing this month to prepare for the upcoming month is doing a lot of sourcing and tucking things away. Like I haven't even filmed the hauls, but I'm like filming my B-roll, filming my thrift with me portion of stuff, having my hauls ready to go because I'm going to be in New Jersey this month. I'm going to be in New York City, Pennsylvania, and Maine. On August 10th, I'm going to lose my assistant, Caitlin, who's been with me for, I think, two years now. And that is going to be a huge void in my business. And then my other assistant, Maddie, who's relatively new, she's just here for the summer. She goes back to college uh, the very start of September. So I'll have her for a couple more weeks. When I feel like I've figured things out a little bit, at least in these current months, the next month, it's like a whole new list of challenges. Last month, the title of my recap video was Embracing Change. During the month of June, I just was going through a lot of changes. Rocco graduated from high school. I added my first What Not show to the mix and whatnot has really impacted my business and I don't really feel like I was ready for it. True to my personality, sometimes I jump in and ask questions later. I did that with my podcast that I used to do. I did that with whatnot. I even did it with YouTube. You know, sometimes I don't think so much about how is this going to impact my everyday life? How is this going to fit in time-wise with my current schedule? I have a feeling about something and I go for it. And oftentimes it does work out for me, but because I dive into things without doing too much research sometimes, 
I end up having to like weather the storm until things level out. And I feel like the month of July was kind of figuring out how whatnot was going to work in my schedule. I feel like I'm getting there. It has just been such a great addition to my selling platforms, but on the same token, it has been a lot to absorb. I do have a video coming out called What Sold on Whatnot, and it's a little bit of a guide to share with you how I set up for my Whatnot shows. I've been doing kind of more formal Whatnot shows, meaning I preload everything. I have pictures and measurements. I have a decent amount of items. I wanna start doing more like casual Whatnot things, like maybe a pop-up or go thrifting and come home and just pull things out of the bag and sell right out of the bag, or maybe take you along for a thrift with me. But like I said, I'm really trying to just get my bearings with whatnot. So one thing I am super happy to report is that as of this morning, thanks to one of my very favorite customers, Deidre, who's been with me for years, she always comes in and buys things full price. And I always feel bad because she has supported my business for so many years. And I always wanna make sure I give her a little bit of a deal. So, but she always buys things full price. She likes them and within 10 minutes she purchases them. So I always like even miss the opportunity to send her an offer. Dee Dee, you're very fresh. So what I usually end up doing is trying to throw in a little thank you gift. This morning, she purchased uh, two items for $179 two of my favorite things uh, that I showed you this morning when I was like half asleep. But that sale put me over, uh, I mean, it's nothing to write home about, but it's actually progress in Poshmark, meaning this was the first month that I didn't do worse than last month. Since March, my sales have steadily declined on Poshmark. And as of right now, I think I am $6 ahead of where I was in the month of June. Not much, but at least I wasn't on the decline for another month. So March, April, May, June, four months in a row, my sales were just declining on Poshmark. And I don't attribute that all to Poshmark. That has a lot to do with the fact that I haven't been listing as much, I've been nurturing whatnot, I've had a lot of stuff going on in my own personal life. I think sometimes it's really easy to point the finger at a platform and say, everything sucks because you changed the algorithm. But I know that when I work my Poshmark business, I make sales. That may not be true for everybody because I have heard from some people, you know, I'm listing, I'm relisting, I'm tweaking my listings, and I'm still not making sales. I'm so sorry if that is the case for you. My sales weren't crazy, but here, let's just do the breakdown. Down. Poshmark as of today July 31st hopefully this video will go out tonight I am traveling to New Jersey tonight so there'll be some editing along the way in route uh, but my sales were two thousand four hundred and thirty five dollars yes yeah, so last month they were two thousand four hundred twenty nine dollars so I'm gonna keep pushing hopefully I'll make a few more sales before the end of the day what not beat Poshmark I had a sale every week on Thursday starting July 7th. I do a, a sale every Thursday at 3 p.m. I'm doing another sale this week, but my daughter Angelina is taking over. She is prepping for it. She's getting all the money for it for her back to school shopping. I'm probably gonna still run the auction. Hopefully Angie will pop in, but it's gonna be all of her stuff. So if you wanna support Angelina in her first whatnot show, that would be awesome if you wanted to tune in. So my sales through the month were $571. That was on July 7th. I had only like 35 items in that show. That was the smallest show that I've done so far and it was also my lowest sales. The following week was the show that I had for my friend Hope where I donated a good portion of my proceeds to her. Those sales were $1,343 and I estimate about $550 is going to go towards Hope. So that is just a check I'm going to write to Hope. The following week was $770. This past month was just my stuff, so no fundraising. I think I had about 60 items in the show and my sales were $867. And my goal for Whatnot is to do $800 in sales per week on average. That's what I'm shooting for. And I think I figured it out that if I if I do a show between like 55 and 60 items, my average selling price is about $15 per item. And these are still like early stages of getting to know the platform. If you total up everything, it's $3,551 in sales. And I'm taking away 551 as just what I'm going to send over to Hope. So that leaves me with about $3,000 in sales on Whatnot. Now what's nice about Whatnot is the fees are not as heavy as they are on Poshmark and eBay. I ran out of memory. Okay, 
Whatnot only charges about 11.5% for a platform fee, and then Poshmark is 20%. So the numbers I'm giving you are my sales. They don't include my cost of goods, which is on average about $5 per item. It's lower than that on Whatnot. I tend to not put my higher cost of goods item on Whatnot, unless I'm very confident that it's going to get bid at a level that I feel comfortable selling. This is for my upcoming video where I wrote down all of the sales from last week what they sold for, what I paid for, so I have a good analysis, so stay tuned for that video. If you're interested in seeing more of my videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel and you can hit the bell so that you'll be notified when I post these videos. I usually post two videos per week, sometimes three if I'm feeling ambitious. So we have $24.35 on Poshmark, on Whatnot, after we take out the approximate $551 for fundraising, we have about $3,000 in sales on Whatnot. And then on eBay, I was so excited because you know I'm always pushing for the $1,000 in sales on eBay. When I did my uh, analysis this month, it came out to $1,026.99. And I was like, yay, I hit $1,000 on eBay. I was so excited. And then I realized that somebody bought a Louis Vuitton bag and never paid for it for $450. So that took my sales down to $576.99. Wah, wah. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Again, Whatnot has been a big focus for me, so I'm still trying to figure out where everything fits. So my total sales for the month of July, as of right now, at like noon, $6,011.99 in sales. Not profit, not cost of goods, which I'm really happy about. I feel like I've been averaging averaging about 5,000 total. And so I think Whatnot has really given me that edge that I've been able to push forward. And it's also moving a lot of product. Moving forward, I'm looking to have 60 items per show, $800 in sales per week on Whatnot. And then if I can get my Poshmark sales back up to where they were, which was like 125 to 150 items per month, that would be amazing. So if I do 60 items per week on Whatnot, that would be 240 items per month. Now they're not always the high-end items, but that's okay. I have over 1300 items in my inventory. I'm a broken record. I would love for that to be under a thousand. It's never going to be under a thousand if I keep doing the same stuff with Poshmark, but potentially once I start pulling some stuff, maybe to sell on whatnot, I can get those numbers down on Poshmark, get my inventory down, move more product between whatnot and Poshmark, and then just like, just finally feel like I'm not so buried because right now I am buried. So say I do even 110 items on Poshmark and 240 on whatnot, that's 350 items moved per month. That would be fantastic for me. That doesn't even include eBay and Depop. Depop, I only had one sale and I think it was like $25 for a pair of Hurley shorts. So I didn't, I didn't even include that in these numbers, but I've really neglected Depop. That's just a quick overview view of my sales and I also do like to include my YouTube revenue because YouTube is a huge part of my work life and my revenue estimated this month is $2,297 on YouTube. We get paid out like on the 15th of the month so they always give an estimate and then the payout actually comes on the 15th and then any affiliate marketing and sponsors sponsorships I don't include in this breakdown but that gives you an idea of where I'm at this month. I do think I am very much at my tipping point Point. two things that I absolutely have to do, have to make a priority in September, and please hold me accountable. Leave in the comments, Lori, did you hire a virtual assistant yet? Lori, when are you gonna hire your virtual assistant? I have to hire a virtual assistant, and September is my goal. Kids are all gonna be gone. I have a lot of pressure on the poor month of September. I wanna get back to Weight Watchers. I wanna hire my virtual assistant. I want my office space to be clean. I feel like so much is gonna change when it's just Jay and I in the house. I hope there's some truth to that. I hope I'm not putting all this stock into the month of September and being an empty nester. And then I just fall, fall into my old habits, whether the kids are here or not. I'm really hoping to be much more structured. This is probably a great place to mention today's sponsor. Thank you so much to Vendu for sponsoring this portion of today's video. As you know, I've been working with Vendu. It's going to be three years in October. And next month in the month of August, I am meeting up with Vendu at an event in Soho in New York City. Grailed is hosting an event at their headquarters and Vendu invited 
me to be a guest and I'm so excited. There's also the real reel in Soho, so I'm planning on doing some vlogging there and I can't wait to just do a little thrifting in New York City. I love the whole team over at Vendu. Many of the people who work at Vendu are resellers themselves, so they know what it's like to be in the trenches. Vendu's customer service is top notch. They're so invested in constantly improving on their product. Vendu is a cross-listing service that allows you to cross-post your items to multiple marketplaces. Currently, most of my items are on Poshmark, eBay, and Depop, but they also cross-list items to my website, which is on Shopify. I love that it's so easy for me to cross-list things. The reason that I wanna hire a virtual assistant is because a lot of the women who I have interviewed, and men as well, through Upwork, they have experience with Vendu, so they know how to go into Vendu and cross post and delist and relist and just help with all that back end stuff. For a long time now, I have used Vendu as my main hub. I don't draft my listings on Poshmark or eBay or Depop. It's all through Vendu. And it's so nice to have everything in one spot. As I'm talking about in this video, I am like perpetually overwhelmed with how many things I have going on at once. So the fact that I can rely on Vendu 24 seven, it's always there for me. I currently have over 200 drafts ready to go that just need me to go in and make a few adjustments and then make them go live. They could go in there and make a lot of those drafts go live for me. Also see what's sold on different platforms and then you can go in, say if something sells on Poshmark but it's listed on Depop and eBay as well, we can just go in, say that it's sold on Poshmark and then it will automatically delist from the other platforms. Vendu also has different price points to fit your business model. So if you're at the hobbyist level, you can get a plan that works for you. And if you do mass volume, say you sell liquidation and you are doing a ton of volume, there's a program for you as well. It's kind of like a sliding scale where you pay by the amount of listings that you wanna do per month. I cannot imagine running my reselling business without Vendu. I feel like reselling has gotten really complicated. There's just so much right now that it can be very overwhelming and I feel like Vendu really simplifies what can be super complicated. If you want to give Vendu a try, click the link in my description. You'll save 25% off your first month of service. You can always reach out to me or to Vendu if you have questions. Thank you Vendu again for teaming up with me in today's video and I'm so excited to hang out with you in New York City in August. Why don't we jump into sales and I'll talk a little bit about some of my best and not so greatest sales on each of the platforms. Why don't we start with Poshmark? My best sale of the month on Poshmark was a bundle that sold. When did it sell? On July 25th. The bundle was just two items and it was a pair of Burberry Clements rain boots that I picked up at the Goodwill outlet. I was really pumped that day. If anybody watched that video, I will link it right here if you missed it. Um, I found this beautiful rain boot, a single beautiful Burberry rain boot in beautiful condition. And I I was looking everywhere in the bins to find it and I was just getting ready to give up. I saw one of the familiar t-shirt guys hanging out in between rotations and I was going to give the boot to him. When I showed him that I had the boot, I'm like, I've been looking everywhere for this boot and I was on my way out. He's like, oh, my buddy's got the other one. I'm like, no way. His friend had the other one. We had a little negotiation. He charged me $20 for the boot. So I bought the boot off of this guy at the Goodwill outlet and then I proceeded to sell the boots. Um, I listed them for $235. And then I also had this Free People blue and white striped smocked crop top that was really cute. So together that was $260 combined. Um, and the person who bought the item sent me an offer for $200, which I gladly accepted. I was so excited about that. Um, so I estimated that the Burberry boots sold for $180 and then the Free People shirt sold for $20. So the Burberry boots cost me $20 initially. Uh, and then whatever they weighed. They were probably three or four pounds because they're pretty heavy. So even if you say four pounds, my bins are $2 per pound. So $8, $28 investment for $180 sale. Of course, Poshmark takes 20% of that. On $200, Poshmark took 40. I was left with 160. That was my best sale on Poshmark in the entire month. My next best sale was something from that crazy $5 designer haul that I 
did. This was a brand new brand to me, which so many items from that haul were new to me brands. And I actually went back and they were still running the $5 sale. I would say that my next haul is kind of a tear down because it was over a week later and I was just like, oh, I just need to go back and test the waters here. Actually, it was exactly a week later and they were still running the sale, but they hadn't added much. And they did have one rack that had some 10 and 20 dollar items so not everything that I bought was five dollars but I think I got 33 five dollar items and I got six ten dollar items so that haul is coming up but one of the things that I did buy was this limited edition it was a Boston designed maxi dress I knew nothing about the brand I just thought the maxi dress was beautiful and it was a size large and I'm like for five dollars this has to do okay somewhere the brand was called Zainab Sumu this was a red floral maxi dress they said that it was limited edition it's currently on their website for three hundred and twenty five dollars three seventy five I listed this dress for two hundred and twenty five dollars and I got a hundred and fifty seven dollar offer which I accepted I was tempted to counter but I was like do not be greedy your sales are down in July this is a very fair offer and you paid $5. So I am going to also do a what sold video specific to this store in this haul. I'm starting to keep track of what's selling. I think in about a month's time, I'm going to revisit that haul and tell you exactly what sold and where I'm at for profit since everything was $5. So $157 less Poshmark fees of $31.40. My net earnings were $125.60 minus $5, so I profited $120.60. Those are my two best sales on Poshmark this month. And also the sale that I mentioned this morning, the $100 uh, free people, th those are right here actually. I didn't really show these up close and personal, but this is new with tag, I'm pretty sure. Cinnamon colored sweater dress, I'll pop up a stock photo here absolutely stunning and Dee Dee said that she had a fall event she was going to wear that too she's going to look stunning then this Wilfred sweater if you guys ever see this Wilfred cropped sweater very basic this is an Aritzia brand and it's a ribbed sweater it's called the deep plunge Wilfred Aritzia black plunge front cropped cardigan sweater these things sell so well I've only sold two I wasn't sure if this one was going to sell as well um, because it's been a few months, maybe five months since I sold the first one, but this one sold just as fast and it sold for full asking price. So that is definitely a bolo. Aritzia is definitely a brand to study a little bit and maybe, maybe just go on to Poshmark and look at solds from Aritzia and see what some of their sub brands are. They're a little bit like Anthropology, where that's like the that's the name of the store, but then they have different brands within and check out some of the sold comps because Aritzia is a great brand. In fact, when Angelina does her whatnot sale and she sells all of her like Charlotte Russe and Forever 21 and she's got some Lululemon in there and like she's got a variety, but a lot of fast fashion stuff. She's gonna sell all that and I'm pretty sure she's going right to Aritzia for back to school. I did sell a Stranger Things burnout t-shirt on Poshmark and it sold for just $12. This was kind of an interesting sale. These were men's Merrill Vapor Glove shoes. I picked these up at the bins and when I ran the comps, they were pretty decent, but these were missing the lace. And um, I, I almost didn't pick them up for that reason, but I decided to go for it. And I think I received four offers on these. A lot of them were low. I had them listed for $40. I finally got a $30 offer, which I accepted. Those shipped out this morning. Um, but just a reminder that even though something isn't perfect, you can still list it, especially if there are decent comps. Also this morning, I sold a Mara Hoffman sweater that I picked up for just $6. I had it listed for 80 and I accepted a $60 offer on that this morning. If I look really quickly at my sales just from this week on whatnot, because I don't have everything in front of me, I purchased some linen pieces at a thrift store that were new with tag and I paid up for them. I paid $13.50 for each item. I tried one in my whatnot sale and I started it at $18. Some of the things that I start on whatnot start at a dollar. Some start at four or five, all depending on what I pay. You want to make sure that you're starting things at a price that you're not going to lose money. I think that's one of the criticisms of whatnot is people say, you know, you're selling your stuff for yard sale prices. But remember, you can set the starting price. So if you're willing to start something a little bit higher at the risk of it not getting um, purchased or bid on, then do that because you don't want to lose money. We're not doing this to lose money. So I started this 
linen top at $18 and I paid $13.50. So it was only a $4.50 profit built in and that was before fees, but that was a chance I was willing to take. I thought I'd at least get $20, $25 for it. It ended up selling for $42. So that was one of my better sales thing. I don't want to give too much info on whatnot because I'm going to get into this in more detail in another video. But what else? I had an afghan that sold for $39. $39 for a handmade afghan that I picked up at Savers. It was $5, 20% off. I paid $4. I had no idea how that was going to do. And I thought whatnot would be a fun place to try it out. I also sold a vintage teddy bear and it was really classic vintage plush. And I thought that uh, we'll see how it does. It only sold for $5, but I bought it at the bins. So I just made a couple dollars on that. And that goes to show you sometimes the things get bid up like the Afghan and then the teddy bear, which, you know, maybe I could have gotten like $20 for that teddy bear on eBay, potentially, maybe 18, maybe 25. I don't know. It didn't have any um, name brand on it, but you just don't know with whatnot. But I enjoy testing the waters with low cost items like things from the bins. Like, well, if it sells for $5, that's fine. If it sells for 30, that's exciting. And it also gives me a way to get to know my buyers. That's been really fun on whatnot too, because certain things that I think are really exciting and they may not sell or sell for what I thought they might. And other things really shock me that people are very excited about. And it also changes from week to week. I had this pride shirt that didn't sell in one of my earlier shows. And I thought it was so cute it was a navy blue button-down cotton shirt short sleeve and it had little rainbow ice cream cones all over it it was so adorable like little embroidered ice cream cones and not a single bid and I think I started at four or five dollars I relisted it I re-ran that item on whatnot in an upcoming show and I think it sold for seventeen dollars and I was like okay that makes more sense so it also depends on who's in the room for whatnot which can be a pro or it can be a con. You can have the best item in the world and if your buyer is not in that room with you, it's not going to sell for what it could potentially be worth. And then on the flip side, if you have the right buyer in the room, like when I sold, oh, that was one of my best sales this month. I sold a graphic alpaca t-shirt and I think it sold for $52 on whatnot. And I never in a million years expected it for to sell it for that much. So you just never know and it's a really fun platform. I would say that my best sale on eBay this month was a Patagonia better sweater that sold for full asking price of $80 and I've had it for a while. I still get excited when I see Patagonia, but I used to be like thrilled when I found Patagonia. And now I'm, um, I'm still excited, but not all of them sell for that price. Like I feel like I'm selling better sweaters now for like 40, 45, maybe 50. So the fact that that sold for full asking price of 80 was really a bonus. So I guess that's it on my sales. I'm sorry it's not like a full on what sold, but I thought that by giving you like a recap on all the different platforms, how I'm doing, a couple highlights in my sales. Oh, I can share with you that in this month on Poshmark, I've only sold 62 items. And remember, prior to March, I was I was averaging between 100, 125, 150 items. Let's just get an average selling price on that. So if my sales this month are 24.35 divided by 62 items, my average selling price is $39. I also had one, two, three, four, five, six days where I had zero sales on Poshmark. In months prior to like the algorithm change, I would probably have one, maybe two days out of the month where I had a no sales day, six no sales days. My top selling brands on Poshmark were Free People with $254 in sales. Oh, that, that boutique brand from Boston, that maxi dress that I talked about. That was 157. Wrap of London was $142. Wrap of London is a brand that I've talked about quite a bit over here. I found a bunch, I think I think in total I got like 12 or 13 pieces from this brand that I found at one location in the Boston suburbs. And I ran comps and the quality was just absolutely beautiful. I sold a cashmere sweater on whatnot for $41, 42, and then I sold one for 52 to $55 on and whatnot. I think the rest of them, the pieces sold on Poshmark and not all of them are even listed. But because I talked a lot about those, that brand this month, that, what did I sell from Burberry for 130? Oh, the boots. 
Duh. Why is that saying $139? Interesting. This must be my profit because it says $139 on Burberry. And then Everlane came in at $92 and Ibex at $82, Madewell at $81, and Aritzia at $79 and then Spanx at $72. Those are like my top selling brands on Poshmark. I listed 101 items this month, which is pretty low. I like to do about 50 per week on average and if I'm pushing myself, more like 70 per week. So that is also a reflection of my sales. So I'm sure if that number instead of 101 was 201, my sales you know, would have been more than 2,400. So it's good to look at the big picture and see, you know, try to put together the puzzle and see why things are working the way they're working on the platforms that you're selling on. All right, I feel like when it comes to sales, I could talk all day about the ins and the outs and my thoughts on things, but I think this is probably a good place to call it. I have definitely reached my tipping point and I'm curious where you're at. Are you feeling overwhelmed in your business? Do you feel like you have things under control? Did you take time this summer to organize your inventory and donate things? I have a big thing in February called Thriftless February where I don't thrift for the large majority of the month and that was my best selling month this year on Poshmark because I spent all of my time listing and a lot less time shopping. If I'm being honest, there's definitely a little bit of pressure for me to source and go thrifting and take you along with me because that's part of YouTube for me. So I think I probably source more than I should because I want to bring content to you here and people seem to like hauls and I love to shop. It's just this momentum that pushes me in that direction with YouTube and it's a real conscious effort. And typically in the month of February, my views are a little bit down on YouTube because I think people like to watch hauls and what I picked up more than they like to, I mean, as much as everybody likes a little bit of organizing and, you know, the details behind the scenes, people really do enjoy the hauls. I need to check myself more frequently and make sure that I'm doing the behind the scenes stuff as opposed to just sourcing. I have to be cautious of that because I'm definitely at my tipping point. Hopefully I'll have more time in the month of September so that will be a pro moving forward. August, I'm literally going to be treading water between all of the traveling that I'm doing. The one good thing about August is I have a lot of my videos already mapped out and I've done a lot of the sourcing already. I just have to actually film the stuff and push it out. But when I'm not actually out thrifting, it really saves me a lot of time because a lot of times I'm traveling an hour to thrift and then I thrift for three or four hours and then an hour to get home and then time to process. If I'm sourcing a lot, it's really taking away from time at home, editing, listing, measuring, washing clothes, all that stuff. And now with Whatnot, Whatnot has become like a 10, 12 hour day for me on Thursdays. I wake up very early to preload my store. We're gonna try to preload a little earlier this week and I try to ship before I go to bed. So it's just a huge commitment because if I don't do it all on third Thursday, it can easily bleed into Friday. When I did my first couple of shows, I was spending all day Friday shipping and then all day Thursday prepping for the show. Now that I'm a little bit more comfortable with the platform, it doesn't take quite as much prep for me. I'm calmer during the actual show itself. I'm putting together a lot of my shipping that night so that Friday I can source if I need to or just do something else because I wanted to make sure that those shows were gonna be worth my time and it wasn't taking up too much of my time and taking away from other parts of my business that I've worked so hard to build. I think during the month of August, because I have so many other things planned, it will be nice that I have already sourced and I already have my videos lined up for the month, which I never do. I usually am not that organized. I would love for you to share with me some of your strategies for keeping things in balance. Are you really strict with your time? Are you good with boundaries? Because I am not good with either. One of the things I did in the month of July was I did my viewer's choice three challenge and that really took a lot out of me as well. I did a lot of sourcing and I was doing a lot of editing so it kind of took away from other parts of my business but I was so excited to do that series and I kind of thought of it at the end of June and I said boom I'm gonna do it and so I just jumped right into it and I'm happy that I did but when I do do those types of things it's like a domino effect. It affects other parts of my business and that's where 
where I struggle sometimes. I get so excited about a concept or an idea and I jump right in and I don't really think of the repercussions it will have on my business. The reason I wanted to do that in the month of July was because I always do my happy holidays in the month of December and that gives my channel a little boost. It's also a time for me to be creative with my content because I do produce a lot of similar content here on my channel. I like to do different series that I can keep as a playlist or people can refer to just something fun. My, my Thrift Across New England series or when I do challenges with friends and then this particular one was a viewer's choice challenge and it gives me some tools moving forward when I test the waters and see what people enjoy. So that definitely impacted my lack of balance in the month of July and I had to play a lot of catch up after that series. I have to think more clearly and more intentionally about those things going into the future and try to plan things out. You'd think me like planner girl, I would be better at planning, but I love planning, but it's also does not come very natural to me. So I think that's why I do enjoy the paper to pen planning because it does help me. Um, but if I don't make time to plan, some of my stuff is out the window. I feel like I am working my business around the clock. It's been a constant battle and it will continue to be, but I'm hoping that in the upcoming months when we are empty nesters, when I'm not sad and crying because I miss my babies, I will be um, focusing on my business and I'm so grateful that I have this business because I think if this were the Lori of like, you know, 2015 when my whole life revol revolved around my kids' schedule and dance and baseball and just so over-focused on my kids, I would have fallen apart in September when they left. And so I'm so grateful for my business. I'm so grateful for my YouTube community because you guys keep me going and give me a reason to show up every day. Thank you so much for joining me on my monthly ramble fest. Let me know what your tipping point is. Let me know how you're doing with organization if you have any major changes in your life. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel like I mentioned earlier if you wanna see more from me. I think I'm gonna visit the pit in the upcoming weeks. I have another installment of my Thrift Across New England series coming your way. I also have my What Sold on What Not video coming. So stay tuned for those videos. Thank you guys as always for your support. I love you so much and I'll see you real soon in a new video. Bye.